Hello friend, this is Rupesh and you are watching CBB Nuts video series on DSA interview question series. I mean, this question you will think that, okay, maybe because you can see it's a matrix data structure, but it's a graph problem. Okay. We'll see how it is graph problem. So what is this number of Iceland question? This is question number 200 in lead code, which says the data is given in a matrix form. And these are like zero one one meaning it is part of land it is a land whereas zero meaning it is a water so you have to find how many separate lands are actually existing in the matrix so for example this is one land this is one land but as they are connected so this is near to this guy both are in the same island only and similarly goes for this and this so if you see this these four ones are actually near each other and the rule is yeah so let's talk about the rule you will consider so let's suppose this is your current position you can consider only four directions so if you consider only four directions meaning you can see horizontally plus vertically but not diagonally so we found our first island you cannot say that okay this is also connected because your diagonal is not allowed you have to tell them first your approach so for that you can say okay i'll start visiting this guy first and then i'll see its neighbors like this one and this one okay and we are not allowed to look neighbors in this. and obviously we'll have boundary condition check that okay for for this you can check all the four directions there is no issue right but for this guy you cannot go up and left because obviously there is a boundary here so we'll do all those checking and there is a new way of doing that okay so if you are an old school like me you love that so yeah we were talking about the approach so you can say that okay i will visit this first i mean this is let's say this is your zero zero position for this one and then you will start looking at the neighbors so let's say you considered this guy and then you will say that okay this is kind of a visited node or element then you will visit here and mark this also visited then maybe you can pick either of this so let's say you're going here first and then you'll say okay this is zero okay this is a boundary left no i am already visited i mean this guy was already visited so what is left this guy okay this is not visited okay i'll mark this visited and like this now you will try to cover this guy's neighbors but everyone is like already marked visited and this one is zero so you won't consider this so that way in one iteration one pass you found out okay these four ones are forming one Iceland. How you will traverse that? There are two ways you can use either DFS or BFS. People generally consider BFS because DFS has its own implicit disadvantage that it will blow up your memory if there are like many elements in there because it's obvious reasons like it kind of create the stack on the RAM and then you will end up blowing your memory. So let's go for BFS. So your BFS will actually kind of say, okay, this is one island and now you'll traverse to the matrix and search for next one and then you will get this one. You will send this element or this one for the traversal and then you'll find, okay, this is just one number which is forming an island. So this is second island and then you will go here, 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 here and then you'll send this guy and then it will come up with both this visited and then you will say that okay there are three island in this matrix once you can explain this to your interviewer then they will say okay go ahead and implement this now let's implement this so you can see we have this number of iceland function let's try to get the number of rows and column but this way you have rows and column and i told you right you have to mark visited and all that so let's do that for that you need uh, a vector of that so like same data structure what the that grid have you can say integer here maybe i don't know i'll, I'll say this one is visited and number of rows comma I'll say each row will have a vector character and this is going to be column and it is going to be filled with character zero notice they are putting everything into the matrix as character so i'll keep it as character so everything is in this visited marked zero so this way you will visit each and every element matrix now you have to check 
if this grid guy j equal to equal to 1 then only you will do something and you'll say this visited also should be what is equal to what it should be 0 then only you'll say I will traverse so if this is the condition then only you'll go and traverse so what I should do is traverse maybe or I should say BF BFS what will send will send grid will send visited will send number of rows sorry I and J the element now let's implement this guy we'll say void and yeah once with this Iceland IL is equal to zero if this is the case we'll say I plus plus so in every BFS you will try to get all the connected ones with each other like from top to bottom and left to right because you're not allowed to uh, traverse diagonal if that is considered you will be done with one island in every iteration so if you are back from this function call meaning you are done for one island okay and I'm going to do this BFS and I know so many people I don't know why they write this vector vector character reference I don't know we should not do that we can just simply say auto ref ref yeah and we'll say grid auto ref this is visited and integer i comma that's it this way it is more cleaner okay now let's get rows obviously grid dot size and then integer column is equal to grid zero dot so we'll column now you have rows and columns and in bfs it is very simple like you just create a queue push one data into that and start traversing that queue so let's create a queue q u e u e of characters go with and then key dot push sorry this queue is not going to be character this is going to be pair of characters because we are going to contain row and column so integer comma integer sorry yeah this is going to be pair of integer and integers and we are going to push i comma j and here we missed one thing the very first thing you should do is mark this visited i j and say now you are visited so from here when you will try to come here you should do this first so visited is done we got the row and column we said that okay i will have a queue which will contain my row and column pair so this is done and classic why your q u e is not empty so we not and then you'll try to get the element what you pushed into that so we can say r1 is equal to q u e dot front dot first and similarly column one is q u e dot front dot second like this you can get both the elements and once you got it you'll say i'll pop this so this is classic and you should know how uh, bfs works once you did this now you have the element let's say i'll go back so you have this element so this is where you are going to visit you push this into what a queue i would say queue you said okay this location maybe zero comma zero you push this location into the queue you popped it out and then now you're going to tell that okay whoever is adjacent to this and adjacency rule is this so you will check this guy i mean insert this guy into the queue and this guy into the queue and by checking the boundary condition let's do that oh yeah wait um, before going there because you have to check four things because you are allowed to go in four directions so you will check okay i am not crossing this boundary i am not crossing this boundary i am not crossing this boundary or i am not crossing this boundary so if you think let's say this is your current position if you are telling i want to check this adjacency in the matrix then you're saying my row is minus one and column is zero so if you'll add this whatever the position is if you'll add this you will actually end up going upward and similarly if you are saying this then you're saying my row is zero but my column is one and if you're checking this guy then you're saying my row is zero but my column is one and similarly this one your row is one whereas your column is zero so only these four things you have to add to your current row and column position and you're done so let's try a trick so i'll say 
Row position, row position. How many row positions are there? We have this guy. So I'll have an array here, minus one. And we have zero and zero. So zero and zero. And then we have one. So one. So four row positions. Similarly, column positions. This is also again an array. And we'll have column is like zero, minus one, one. Zero, minus one, one. And then zero, this. So now you can write a simple for loop and say that, okay, on my current row, I'll just add this and this and check if they are in the boundary. And in second iteration, you'll check this, this, and this. If you have four, you have eight, meaning if you are allowed for the diagonal also, then your these things will increase, right? Then you have to add even more. So let's quickly see what I'm talking here. Now, from here, what I'll do uh, for i is equal to zero, I should be less than equal to three and plus plus i. Let me tell you, this is your new row is equal to already computed row, I mean r1 plus row position, okay? Yeah, I just forgot to write integer row position array is equal. What did we wrote there? It was minus one, zero, zero, one. So we'll have minus one comma zero, one. And integer column position, what was there? Like zero minus one, one, zero. Zero minus one, one and zero. That's it. So here we have i and your new column is going to be one plus column position. So this is the way without actually having to write four times if and else, if and else, if and else, because you have these four combinations, right? This one, this one, this one, and this one. And if it is like allowed for diagonal also, then you will have four more conditions. So this is your new row, row and new column. Once you have it, then you have to check if this new row should be greater than or equal to zero. So this is very important condition. I'll write like this so that it will look a little nice. And new row should be less than the actual row. So this is one condition and we'll need many such conditions. New column is greater than equal to zero and new column should be less than column what we are getting from here, okay? This column, because we are trying to check the boundary conditions, right? So we have to anyway check the boundary conditions, but we don't have to write, I mean, those four if, and if it is diagonal, then eight if condition. You can just run with this simple one for loop. Now, so if the boundary conditions are fine, then what? Then now you have to check whether this grid is containing one because now you are sure that I am in the boundary. So let's go and do that. I've grid and we'll say new row and new column is equal to equal to what? One, then only it is considered. Okay, let me just put it into a new, okay. Um, okay, and very important thing, it should not be visited. Okay, so let's check that. We have visited new row and new column. This should be what? This should be zero. Okay. If all the conditions are met, now you are good to say that, okay, I will consider this. So you'll say visited new row and new column is equal to one now. Now I'm going to visit that and you will push because you have already visited that you will push that into queue. So push and we have new row and column like this. Are we done? Okay, let's check this. Now we have to return this IL Iceland from here. And if I'm doing anything wrong, we'll get to know. So, or maybe you guys must, must be uh, screaming from your side. Okay, Rupesh, you just missed that. Rupesh, oh my God. Yeah, that happens. Okay, so let's see if it is running. No. I might have some disastrous compile time error, obviously. This and this is, uh oh, this one. Haha, <laughs> this one should be, yeah, wrong because this uh, editor is a little small here, right? I don't know. Okay, accept it. Cool. I don't know. Uh, let's submit this. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, cool. 
so it is working fine so yeah i'll sum up this video thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next videos bye bye take care and as always keep learning bye bye